Christ is trying, Christ to, wake is trying us to wake up. us up, trying to show us that in these last days, he's still right there waiting for us. Still giving us another opportunity to go after him, to find him, but we're running out of time. Is everything that he had said and prophesied in these last days of what we're seeing today? It's the darkness of the understanding separated from the life of God because of the ignorance, because it's what their heart, they choose to go after the darkness. It says that light came into the world. But what's that, brother? What'd you say? God bless you. God bless you. funny because the world will always try and say something they'll try and spew something out of their mouth until you actually address them they'll try and curse try and revile try to take the lord jesus christ name in vain and try and say something until you actually address them and then they'll skip them they'll be quiet because they know it's because of the truth the truth for what it is it's being alienated from god because of their heart their darkened heart their understanding they don't have understanding they're foolish and that's everything that we see and we see it in the world but we can be new it's being new by the spirit of god which he offers which he gave up on the cross and that's the salvation it's the salvation in christ which is the life and through him we're reborn so we get that spirit we get the holy spirit which is not being separated from the life of god because it's christ but that's what this world is they're darkened in their understanding as we can see and they're separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that's in them doing the hardening of their heart. And that's Ephesians chapter 4, verses 18. And it's everything that we see in the last days, everything that Christ had prophesied about. But we can have knowledge, we can have understanding in Christ if we give in to Him, if we want to. But the reason people can't see that these last days that we're in don't think that their life has any value, has any meaning is because they've been alienated from God and the darkness, the fruits is all there to show. It's the wickedness on the rise and them becoming lovers of themselves, idolaters, thieves, more and more in these last days because it's what the Word of God, it's what Christ had prophesied about and people can't see it, they choose not to see it. That's what it is. They've been alienated from God by their own desires. It's the reprobate mind knowing right from wrong but yet still choosing to go after wrong. And this is what happens. And this is why the wrath of God is coming. And it's coming for sins. Because there's a wage, there's a consequence. There has to be. Christ paid that for us. It's understanding His characteristic, who He is. And He's a holy God. And the wage to go against Him, if we sin and we deny Him, that's the death, that's the penalty. But He paid for it for us. Because even though we're born in through Adam... We're born and through death, all of us are natural, natural way to be to go after sin. We all sin. So also life entered through one man and took that for us because we're born into it because he loves us. So even though we're born into it, we all still choose to sin anyway. Lying, stealing, it doesn't matter. But he loves us. He could have just said nope. But he came off his throne, separated from the Father, took the wrath so that we would never have to be separated. We wouldn't have to pay the consequences, but it's all by a gift. It's all by a choice. He's not going to... It's all by a gift. It's all by a choice. What's up, bro? Why are we are born in this life? Why are we born into this life? Yeah. Through sin. Through Adam. We're born in with that corruptible seed. That's why we have to die. Christ says it's appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment. But he also says, he who believes on me, even though he might die, he will for surely live. So it's, it's the spirit. It's him dying to show us that there's life after the grave, but that there's consequence. There's a consequence for the wage, and that's, that's the death. And if we embrace that sin... That's the eternal consequence instead of just believing and giving into Christ. So it was never originally supposed to be like this. It's why there's so much wickedness, so much pain, so much hurt. The scriptures even said the uncomfortability from when we sweat, from when we, um, from like when we even just get like little, like dry skin. That all came in. Uh, sir, who is Adam? Adam, just the first created man. Adam is the first is created our man. Father or no? Is Adam the father? Ad yes. No, Adam's not the father. Adam's the created... I mean, he's the first human being that came up after 
He, Adam's the one who held held the entire human race inside of him. He was the first human, the first man created. So all of humanity came in through Adam. He was the first one. Yeah, so then, so God, because of that corruptible seed, he put himself into a system of flesh to come get his people back. Because his people were born into sin, the wages of sin is death. So he goes after them to, to, to take that, to take that, uh, that consequence, take the wages, the wrath of God. So if we accept it, because it's a gift, it's been bought and paid for. There's nothing that we could ever do to give back to God, to pay for God. He created everything. We sin against him, we get the lake of fire and brimstone. The only thing that we can do... Is it, is it a punishment for Adam to not in the dirt? Is it a punishment? Well, Adam, the scripture says that Adam had made that choice himself. So Adam, everything was good until Adam had taken the bite of that apple before Adam had gone and chose to go after sin. So once he chose to do that... Then death and everything, all the uncomfortability, you know, even animals, animals attacking people, attacking other animals. It was never originally like that. All that disease, everything came in because of that action by Adam. But we all still sin, all of us. We all still choose to go after sin. Does that make sense? But sir, what I have read in multiple books. Hang on, I'm, I'm listening. Hang on. I'm listening. When Adam fallen, he was in heaven. Uh -huh. And he was alone. So he asked, uh, he asked God for someone to talk to him or something. Like, you mean Eve? When God saw that he was alone? Yeah, in heaven. And he asked God for someone to speak with him. So he created Hawa, which is our mother. Where did you read that the Garden of Eden was originally in heaven? What are you reading? Where are you where where do you get your facts and your script? I'm just trying to find because I can relate. Like I've done I've read other sources and whatnot, so I'm just trying to see like where what you read to get that. In a Quran I have read it. Oh yeah, the Quran? Yeah. Yeah. And I ask some like uh, scientists mm -hmm. they say it was the first one created you are right and then our mother Hawa comes from his bones from his back here his rib yeah his rib yeah and uh, how you can say the demon of Satan tried to call him and God tell them to not eat from that tree it was like sitting under a tree Mm -hmm. and they aware him not to eat from it. Yeah. Eat from everything. So eat anything you want. Came back to the earth. I'm sorry? Sorry for my English. No, no, no. You're good, bro. You're good. Sorry. It's just a little quiet. Can you... Yeah, so yeah. when when an Adam in heaven under the tree, God aware them to not eat from that tree mm -hmm. and Satan from a jealousy from him because he is not from like the light or hell are you talking about hell. are you talking about the enemy Satan yeah, yeah. okay yeah you know when you're talking to him eat from it eat from it you know when he eats it was like a punish, punishment from Allah it's God like bring him to the death, then the life starts. Mm -hmm. So can I ask you something? Yeah. Does the Quran tell you that? Yeah, it's like... Uh, Does the Quran tell you that God made Adam and Adam was deceived by the devil? Does, is it, is the Quran tell you that? Uh -huh. And after he the jealousy from Satan. Okay. Because Satan created from hell and angel created from heaven or light or something like this. Uh -huh. 
an angel of light who chose to create something like a dust, you know? Yeah. I don't know how people know. You mean like how he created man out of the dust of the earth? Is that what you're saying? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. it's the earth. It wasn't a... Think about that, too. Think about that. So it wasn't... The sources and the, the people that tell you that it was originally in heaven, whether you're reading it from the Quran or whether you're getting the information from different people, it wasn't in heaven. He created Adam out of the earth. It was the dust of the earth. So the Garden of Eden, where Adam was was created from the earth so it wasn't he wasn't actually originally in heaven it was the earth created for man so that's kind of cool just just think about that too next time when it's it's awesome it's all right there in the scripture it's just the detail of it god formed adam out of the dust of the earth i, I know like before he came to the earth he was in heaven adam was no because if he was formed out of the earth he couldn't be formed before he had to have been formed right there. You see what I'm saying? Because he wasn't formed before. You know all prophets, you know all prophets and messengers? Yeah. They have been in, in the heaven, right? That's why we got to test them. That's why we have to make sure what they prophesied about is true. The events that they say are in detail. Because anybody can just say, oh yeah, I'm a prophet. Worship me. You know, I can say something that might happen or for example with after that when he came to the earth he has two sons Abi and Abi okay I'm gonna t I'll tell you right now it's One false but I'm listening to you kill each other so you're thinking of um, Cain and Abel see you see how the you see how the sources I'm just trying to, because I'm just trying to, because I just want to help you, bro. I see that you have in your heart the desire to know the truth, the desire to want to know the truth. You're talking about this. So when it was these sources that you're reading and you're getting it from come 600 years after from the word of God. So everything that you're reading and you're getting is an exact copy from the Word of God, only they're leaving out the details for you because they're trying to keep you lost, bro. You have it. It seems like you have it. You just don't have the details exactly in place. It's because the, the, the book that you read and the people that you listen to are deceived themselves. They don't know the scriptures. That Those two are Cain and Abel. They came from Adam and Eve. That's, that's the first. Think about this. Cain and Abel, cannibal, cannibal. We live in a cannibalistic, demonic society. The enemy rolls around like a prowling lion looking to see who he may devour. So that Cain and Abel was an image to, of the sin, the destruction that comes in from the sin and how it was going to overcome. But God said, nope, I'm coming in the system of flesh. I'm taking my children back. The cannibalistic society. No, you're gonna take it back. What'd you say, bro? They said you're gonna take us back to him. Oh yeah, bro. We just have to make sure we have the right Christ. We have to make sure we, we serve the right God because if we don't, we have to make sure we have that relationship with him, bro. Because he'll say to me, he'll say to many on that day, he says, They'll say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, cast out demons? Now think about that prophesy cast out demons that's crazy and they'll say turn from me for i never knew you so it's about knowing him bro you got to know him you got to make sure you have the right christ bro make sure you serve the right god okay so which one the right god christ god himself in flesh because god is a spirit we're a world of flesh we're brought in through flesh any man who looks upon God, I'm sure you can understand. You know, God being so powerful, if we were to look at him, we'd just disintegrate. He's so mighty. That's why Moses had to wear a veil. They couldn't look directly at him because if they did, we're so, boom, we just disintegrate because he's so holy. So now at Christ, because we're a system of flesh, he put himself into a system of flesh. So now we can see God. Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 says that he's the visible image of the invisible God. So we can know God 
see how to pray, see how to walk, see how to interact with people, but have that relationship with him, lay eyes on him through Christ. He made a way for us through Christ. Does that make sense? Because there's no way that we could get back to him. There's the sins. It's, there's, there's no way. There has to be one that is pure, that walked the perfect sinless life, and no man can do that, only God himself. So he did that for us. He came down, walked the perfect sinless life, gave his life up, because that blood, that sacrifice, covers. He's the only one to do so. So he who believes, that blood will cover. It's just like the court and justice systems here. It's like if I break the law, I can't say, judge, I'm a, I'm a good person. There's none righteous. So what? You still committed these fines. You still committed these trespasses. But if I, it's the same with God. I'm going to face his justice system. I'm guilty. But in comes Christ. The judge can say, look, someone paid your fine. You're free to go. And because of that blood, we have to do sin. What'd you say? We are not human. I know. Right. That's why we have to give in to the one, the perfect sacrifice. Because none of us are perfect, so we deserve death. We deserve wickedness. That's what we get. But because of him, now because he's perfect, that blood will cover us. And we'll have the, the image of the sun. So when we die and we face God and we're covered with that blood, he sees the sun. He sees that pure sacrifice. He can say, you're free to go. That blood has covered you. And if not, you got to... Sir, so, um, what religion are you? Christian? I mean, yeah, you can say that. I mean, a lot of people say that they're Christian and they're not Christian. I just, I have a relationship with Christ. I just know the, the true living God. And, and that's what it is. Just having, I just have a relationship with Christ, you know. Because anybody can just say, oh, yeah, I'm a... You know. Who is Jesus Christ? Who is Jesus Christ, the, the living Son of God, but God himself in the flesh? But how is the Son of God and is God himself? So, when it says, in John chapter 3, verse 16, it says that he is the... Um, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So that begotten is the, the only essence. So do you remember how we're born in through Adam? We're born in through Adam. So we're, we come from Adam. We don't come from God. We are created and we're born in through Adam. But Christ, he's the only begotten son, which means he's of the same essence of the father. So can I, would you agree that God can do whatever he wants to do? If I, if you just say God can do whatever He wants. Sir, one second, one mm -hmm. second. Yeah. You tell me Jesus is a Son of God. Yes, by the God essence. Himself. By by the essence. So, let's say I don't know. I have no knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I am curious. I am a man. Yeah. Do they have a son? Okay, so let me try and do this. Let me try and make, let me try and say this. Okay, so let's say you have, I'm not saying we're animals, I'm not saying we're animals, just for the, for the picture. Let's say we have like a horse, and let's say we have like a zebra. So all of creation is this horse, right? It's just this horse, it's got the blood of the horse, right? But then you got this zebra. So even though these horses and these zebras still might share the same they're not the same so even though he is still a human and still the son of god he's still the essence the being of god so when we have the when, when we're horses and the world is like horses he would be a zebra completely different it's still a zebra so if a if a horse if a zebra has a child and it's a zebra that zebra still belongs to the zebra. It still has the same bloodline. It still has the same DNA, the same traits. It's not a horse. That's the same with Christ. It's, it's the, the essence of God being brought down, the only begotten son. So he still has that trait, the same spiritual nature as the father because he came from the father. He's not horses. He's not the rest of the world like we are. Sorry, I'm trying to like kind of... Does that kind of make sense a little bit? What's the definition of God? What's the difference of God? No, definition. The almighty, ever-existent, eternal being? Like there is never be born or have a son or something else, right? No, he can have a son. It's 
it's the the essence so let me first john chapter let me go to john you have no parent you have no son no so just because god came into a world doesn't mean that he can't do what he wants doesn't mean that christ was never there he just came into the world so he was already there at the beginning of the world first john chapter 1 verse 1 says in the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word was god now first john chapter 1 verse 14 says the word became flesh and dwelt among us so everything was created by him for him that's first john 1 2 and there's nothing that is or will ever be without him in revelation chapter 1 verse 8 let me just let me just read this real quick because then you'll get the sense i can read it straight from the scripture so that way you don't think that i'm like just saying it i'll show you so let me go to revelation 1 8 real quick okay so jesus to him who loves us has been freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be his kingdom the priest to serve his god and father no okay to serve his god and father to him be glory and power forever and ever amen look he is coming with clouds and every eye will see him those who even pierced him so christ was pierced and all the people on earth will mourn because of him and so it shall be amen so it says he says in verse 8 i am the alpha and the omega says the lord who is who was and who is to come the almighty so god himself can do whatever he wants he put himself into a world of flesh that's that's what it is what did it what no not a god he is god he says in first john he says in john chapter 1 verse 10 that i and the father are one it's of the same essence so it's three different persons you have the father you have the son and you have the spirit right three different persons but all one spiritual being it's god who broke himself up he can do whatever he wants it's not three different gods it's the same essence it's just broken off it's not it's not an idea bro and that's why that's why the world is how it is it's it's been proven it's the fact that there's three that bear witness in heaven that's the okay, father I the son and the spirit i study physics so everything has to make the reason so i need to believe in yeah, physics or physics well you're looking at it a worldly view you're not looking at it spiritual you're not thinking that god can't do whatever he wants when you look at it as a spiritual view the true living god he can do whatever he wants so when you try and say oh, i'm going to look at it science i'm going to try and look at it physics you're looking at how the at the how the world looks at it which won't make sense because it's worldly eyes it's it's been darkened alienated but when you want to know and you want to seek and you look at it through the spiritual eyes you see that the spirit of god can do whatever he wants so he can put himself into a world of flesh but he's still god he was still there he still created everything what there is so many scientists in this world right well science so also they say that evolution is real too bro but their own definition of science disproves it yeah the quran also tells you in the quran 434 that it's okay to beat your wife bro the, nothing that muhammad or the quran has ever said or prophesied about has come true they say go to the jews go to the christians for the truth it's muhammad who sucked on little boys fingers who called ethiopians raisin heads bro you can look it up it's all the fruit bro it's sun worship your own islam the star the moon it's moon god that's the moon worship uh star worship that's ball worship bro that's that's demonic that's what it it's all right there on the the crescent moon and star that re, that goes all the way back to ancient egyptian time ancient canaanite time bro where they worship the moon and sacrifice their children bro it's all just you see how it's all a copy it came from 600 years after the word of god only only it twists and turns the scriptures they say that allah split the moon 
or Muhammad split the moon, but the moon isn't split. They say he put it back, but God would never, God would never do something just to show you and then put it back. You see what I'm saying? The proof isn't there. They can just say, oh yeah, he split it and put it back, but the proof isn't there. Everything that Christ did, his proof is there, bro. What? Sorry. Muhammad says so many things comes true. Like what? I mean, like with, with science, they prove it's true. What, what did Muhammad prophesy about? Because I'll tell you what Christ prophesied about over 3,000 years ago that came true. That's what I'm saying, dog. With Christ, you'll know for sure. You won't even have to think about it, bro. Can you, sorry, can you talk into your mic, brother? Sorry, I... I said... Yeah. My English level is very low in religion words. Oh, okay, yeah, so if I'm ever... I just get really passionate, so I'm sorry if sometimes it might seem that I'm coming off just like angry or I'm not I'm, I'm sorry I'm just passionate about it brother so no I got you bro I got you it's good I'm, I'm learning from you and I'm I have no problem that I just want to I just want to make sure that people know their value and know that they can be saved bro that's that's just what it comes down to I just want to make sure that yeah, those it's really good. for me I'm searching for knowledge like I am passionate for knowledge I want yeah to know that's him. good that's good bro you can know everything in Christ. The meaning of life, the purpose of life, in Christ, bro. So, uh, I have a question. Yeah. That uh, temple of Jesus Christ. The cross, yeah. It's, it's idol, yeah. It's, they, Christ wasn't white. It's the, the New Age uh, Roman Catholicism that came in where they claimed that Christ was white. They have the crucifix that they carry around. Do, they go like this, and they don't realize they're doing an upside-down cross on their heart. But they're deceived. It's not the right Christ is the thing. That's the. But yeah, that cross that people they think that if they have the cross and if they think they go That's after the, the cross. Belief, right? That I mean, I guess I don't really go off of symbols. I just go off of the Spirit of God. I mean, a symbol is not going to save me. I could have symbols everywhere. It's not going to do anything. I mean, if Jesus Christ died in a chair, they would like a chair and... Pro probably. You know what's crazy, dude? You want to know what's crazy, though? It's just because of how it was. It was the the way... If they would have had electric chairs back in the day, he might have done so, but it was the, the Roman execution. It was the crucifixion. It was the... Uh, the, like the most painful death that they had, the slow, painful death. That's just the way that they killed people. So because of the way he was killed, they like worship the, the cross. Um, but it's just a symbol, yeah. If they want to kill someone slowly, it should be all enemies they kill from the cross. With the, with the cross. Yeah, that's what I mean. There was still, I mean, from years before and then years after My Christ, there was... This guy has been killed Wait, what did you say? Sorry. Why Jesus killed by the cross and he's the only one killed by us? He's, he's not. He's just the only one that gave his life up who didn't commit any sin. So there were other people that are being crucified and that were crucified back in the day. It's just to be looked at as he's the one who was, excuse me, who gave his life up for free, who wasn't... Everybody else who was crucified was deserving of death. He wasn't. No, he wasn't the one who could be killed. No, he was killed. He gave his life up, though. Nobody killed him. He said, I lay my life down. And what's the name of creature later in the end of the world, which you have only one eye here? What's the name of it? What are you talking about? There is creature in the end of the world. It will show up. And people would believe him. Oh, the Antichrist? The the devil in the flesh? That one? Is that what yeah, you're talking yeah, about? Only one eye. I think I think you're referring to is it to where he gets blinded and he's healed? He's blinded in his right eye and then he 
what happens is he shows signs from heaven, gets he burnt, or he sh are you talking about he shows up with just one eye? As a creator, later in the end of the world, he will show up and he will travel all earth in 40 days. And people will believe him because he has everything like a God. And he revives people from the dead and he can like, put people in hell and in heaven. I don't, I don't know where you're, you're getting that, but I don't, only God has the power to throw. Because they say, they say Jesus will kill him later. You're probably referring to the Antichrist when the beast comes and sets himself up claiming to be God, claiming that everybody worships him, and then Christ returns, God returns and comes back and then destroys him. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's... That's in the word of God. That's in the, the scriptures. It's where he, the devil claims to be God, sets himself up, makes everybody take the mark of the beast, and then Christ comes back and then destroys him. Because it, it's God, God returning back. Jesus is a messenger and he is a son of Maria. That's what I believe. A son of Mary, but Mary was a virgin, so that's another, remember how we're born in through Adam? Earlier, I was talking about we're born in through Adam. That's another thing is it's it's God put His Spirit inside of Mary, and Mary was impregnated. So the fact that it's Christ being the only begotten of the Father, He doesn't have an earthly father. Remember the horses and the zebras. So even though He's in a world of horses, He still has that zebra trait. So He had to be born into a world to a woman, to Mary, who was a virgin, but he has no father here because his father is, is God, which he is. If, if Jesus Christ was a book, then who created the book? It's not a book. They, they just put, they, the thing is, there was no chapters, there was no, it was just letters, but he's the, he's the word of God. It's the spoken. It's when he spoke life because he says in John chapter 14, verse 6, that I'm the way, the it truth. And the life. Christ is the messenger because the messenger is the word, the life of God. He is the message. He's the message of God. He is the messenger. No, he is God. God is the messenger. God is in the world. He is the message. God is high level, sir. Please talk about it He's a high level more than messenger. Give them the message. I, no, no, he's the word of God, though. He's the true word of God. It's John chapter 1, verse 14. It's the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hang on. Let me get another scripture for you. I was just reading this. It's Revelation chapter 19. I'll show you. Just to kind of, maybe you can kind of understand what I'm trying to say. Here. Um. Hang on, sorry, bro. Take your time, bro. It's just where it says that he is the word of God directly. Because I know 1 John chapter 4, yeah. uh, chapter uh, 114, it says the word became flesh. So Christ is the word. And in the beginning was the word and the word. So God gave his word to the prophet and the prophet gave it to the people so they can believe God. Yeah, but understand that it's the it's the life when God spoke it. It's the life, the power that's in the word. And that word, that power, is the message, which is Christ. Christ is the word. He is the life. So he's literally the walking words of God because he is God. Does that make sense, kind of? Oh. This is kind of weird, I'm just trying to kind of make it, all I'm trying to do is just kind of try and make it to where it uh, kind of makes sense, is in a way. But let's, I'm just... say, let's say you are Jesus Christ, right? Yeah. And your father is your God. And your father tells you some words and advice, and you tell it to the people, or tell it to your friend, if you see something not good, you remember the advice of your father, and you tell them. Uh -huh. Yeah, but he's more than a messenger, bro. He's the one who died for us. 
He's just a living word. Because, like me, like me, so like, uh, like me, so like if I'm on here, I'm just spreading the gospel message. So even though I have the message, it's still the word of God. And even though it's the word of God, Christ is the word of God. So I can be a messenger, I'm just speaking the message. The message is that it's Christ. Christ is God, and He is our redemption, our salvation. That's the message. He is the living Word of God, spoken. Word of God, He would never buy and He would never book. It's not. A, it's not a book. I mean, when you read your Quran, it all came from books. And when we have, when people say, "Oh, yeah, it's just a book," every knowledge and every source that we have from schools, we get it from a book. The fact is, is the, it was what it was before the book. It was just written down letters that they put into chapters put together. But every form of knowledge that we have is passed down from a book. I think before books it was just a spiritual word. Right, which is what we have. We have the actual words, the living words. We have the words of the, of the prophets. We have the word of God himself. And it's all been put into a book. So even though it's a yeah. book, it's still the, the actual spoken words of God, you know? And do you think that book is real? Absolutely. It's original? It hasn't been corrupted? Not a single corruption. We can go back to the original Greek and Hebrew text and transfer it directly to English. Beings, if you remember. What? We have evil side on our bodies or, or on our personality. Before we give in to Christ, yeah. That corrupted seed, yeah. I think all the books have been corrupted. Okay, well, then you got to do your research, and that's why you got to prove it. Because if you truly want to know the truth, and if you truly want to prove that this word has been corrupted, like I did, like I wanted to in the past, because I wanted to prove it, I didn't want it to be real, but the more I could, the more I couldn't get away from the truth, the more I fell in love with the truth, the more convicted I was and the more you realize that only God himself can prophesy the true word change your life give you the strength have the standard evidence the physical evidence the spiritual evidence I mean we can go down the list if you want we have the ark we're in Turkey we have Lot's wife that's still a pillar of salt we have the chariot wheels at the bottom of the Red Sea we have uh, the uh, coals the lake of fire brimstone that came down in Sodom and Gomorrah when Christ says in the last days there'll be wars, rumors of war, nation will rise against nation. There'll be earthquakes, pestilence, famines, the mark of the beast, mask one letter away from mark. You can't buy, sell, or trade without your mask on. We just hit a record earthquake. The disease rises are numbered. Everything that Christ had prophesied about. But it's also spiritually. It's, it's the truth. It's the fact that it's his blood is the only one that will give you the strength to overcome our sins. The only one that will help us and make us want to change the way that we live. And I know that firsthand because I've gone after everything, tried to disprove it myself, and only came to the realization that you can't, you never will, just like everybody else. And it's the truth. It's everything from the standard, the spiritual, to the Bible prophecy. I mean, they've been trying to, dude, they've been trying to debunk it for thousands and thousands of years and they never will it's because it's the true word of god that may, it either means that this is the truth and everything else is wrong or that this is wrong and other things are right so to find that out we do so and you get into it and you test it and you'll see just like most people oh yeah 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 do you want a new message that is my name this guy yeah oh zucker nike yeah bro he got i've Watch my brother David Wood on, on YouTube and everything. It's they the standard narratives that your this own is very interesting. I'm they said that you should listen to him. Dude, I'm trying to tell the they said that the standard narratives, Yashar Kadi, you know who Yashar Kadi is? You know Yashar Kadi? Look up the standard narrative has holes in it. Zakir Naik looks up to Yashar Qadi. Yashar Qadi is the number one scol uh, Muslim scholar. We have videos of him admitting that the Quran, with all 27 plus different versions, with different words, 
has the standard narrative has holes in it. It's the exact words out of his mouth, bro. It's coming to, it's because people are realizing, people are seeing the truth, bro. We just want you to see the truth. It's not about, it's not about being right. Oh, you're wrong and I'm right and that. They just, it's just about knowing the truth. We just want you guys, to, want people, the world to know the true God is all. Yeah, look it up, homie. The standard narrative has holes in it. Can I ask you something, though, bro? It. Sorry, will you will you will you pull it up, bro? Sorry, I can't hear you. I say I'm totally confused. Mm -hmm. Just look it up, Yashir Kadi. The standard narrative has holes in it. Yes, Kadi. Yeah. yeah. Let me ask you something, bro. If you die, do you know 150% sure that you're going to go to heaven? Not. In that moment later, yeah, I will go there. But you don't know right now, right? I know I will go to heaven later. If you were to die right now, would you go to heaven? Do you want to know? Because you can know 150% sure that by the blood of Christ you will be saved. Well, this is another story. And uh, how you can know is from your actions. Like you are further Yeah. I mean, well, anyone can say, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm Christian and like turn around and do something. Stuff. I'm sorry, I, I, I'm sorry, I just, I couldn't really hear. For some reason, I don't know why. Yeah, it's good, yep. You don't know, like, when you're going to succeed in the exam until you know your answer is correct or, or no. So the same thing, when you die, you're not, you don't know you're going to go into heaven or hell until you know your action. Is it good or bad? Well, you don't. But, like what you have done. Well, you don't, and other people might not, but those who know Christ know for sure. That's why we're 100% sure. And you can be 100% sure, 150% sure, to know exact as well, soon as you die if you have Christ. Is Muhammad later that he will be the one who survive us, all of us from the hell? Like the people who go into hell? Yeah, that, that would be cool if, if Muhammad was actually true. If Muhammad was actually true prophet and wasn't false, then that would be would be so. But he's not. He's of the devil, bro. There's nothing. Has Muhammad ever done anything for you, bro? Can Muhammad help you overcome your sins, bro? Did Muhammad die on a cross for you? He's a prophet that goes against the actual scriptures of God, bro. That's why you're not 150% sure you know when you die. You've been deceived, bro. Yeah, because... What's the... How we can say... The job of messenger and the prophets. They give us messages. Like Are you... Right. And, and that messenger called Ethiopians raisin heads and sucked on little boys' fingers and lips. And, and, and had sex slaves. He was also white, too, if you want to know the true roots. We, bro, this is all coming from scholars. If, if you want to give me your name or, or a, a link to, like, a, a social media, I will send you your own scriptures that show you how he is white and had slaves and how he says it's okay to beat your wife, that it's okay to take minors for sex slaves. I will show you them, bro. Most people don't do it because they don't read the scriptures. Sir, I think this is kind of washed brain. But you don't even know for sure. I will show you. Quran 434. Look it up right now. Quran 434. Look it up. You're just living in denial. With yourself. Is it normal to be a woman? No, it's it's wicked. And your scriptures, your 
so-called false prophet says that in Quran 434 that it's okay to beat your wife into submission if she doesn't listen. It says that first tell her and if she doesn't m listen, don't speak to her and if she still does Bring it up. Do you have your Quran? Do you have your Quran? Look it up. Chapter 434. It's okay to beat your wife into submission. It's not it's not the surah just go open it's just the book of the Quran. Chapter 4, verse 34. I have it all on my phone. I just can't bring it up because I'm on the phone. Yeah, beat them, but right, right. They always say this. They always say, oh, no, they didn't mean beat. They just meant lightly. They always try and twist it. It's just beat them, bro. Let's say angels, they create from light. But the definition of light in English and Arabic is not the same. Well, yeah, I mean, we can do say whatever. It's just the fact of the matter is it's facts. We can say whatever, but want to get to the facts of things. You know? So the root of it, if your word... So if Muhammad's the true messenger, and that message, his characteristic, would never go against the true living God. If God shows his love by dying for us on a cross, but then says it's okay to beat your wife into submission, and that Ethiopians are raisin heads, and that Christians or Jews are the worst of creatures... Why would God, God would never go against himself. That's why we know it's obviously the one of many reasons for it to be false. But I'll send you more if you want. I can show you. It's not beating, sir. It's not beating. In Arabic, yeah, it's beat, but the meaning is not. Because he never, ever, God and God, tell us to beat one. This is never, ever. They say... Uh, a man are stronger more than women, right? If they are uh, they do something bad behind you, you can leave them. Does it say that? No. Does it say that in your in your Bible in your book? As a word, yes. The meaning, no. Now you're just playing tricks, bro. Come on. What does beating mean, bro? So does that mean if, if to into submission, the submission is different? Does that mean the word of Muhammad is different? Does that mean moon is different? I mean, we got to take it for what it literally is. It says beating. So the definition of beating, you can't twist it, bro. You can't jump, jump laps around it. Okay. Beating means to beat into submission. To strike her. What do you think strike means, bro? Listen to me, sir. The beating has a meaning, like you said, is true. But when it comes in sentence, sometimes the meaning changes. Okay, but, but that's not what like it I meant said, in your like book. I said to you, angel, they say created from light. But the light in Arabic and English is but light still means light. It doesn't it doesn't counter. Death still means death. Life still means life. Strike and beating still means strike and beating. It's not a play on words, it's what it is. The word's there. And that's what it means. When it says that she won't listen to you and you don't talk to her to strike her. It's not it's not English. It's the actual translating it directly over. That's that's what it is, but that's from another day, bro. There's that's just one verse, bro. There's there's many. Your own top uh, 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 what I forgot the name of it. The scholar. Your top the top scholar even said that the standard narrative has holes in it, bro. Okay, I think I'm gonna translate it. Yeah.
What'd you say, bro? Like I said, this uh, chapter, they say a man is as strong as the woman. And you can uh, spend your money on it and blah, 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 like a good man, a good husband for a wife. But they lot or more than how we can say a bad woman mm -hmm. beating as a wood and now my turn oh and the Arabic oh, so you can physically you can you can you can verbally you can verbally abuse them then right so you can verbally strike them so you can sit there and verbally beat on them you know what Christ says to do with your wife Yes, yeah, screaming. You know what Christ says to do with your wife? He says to love her. Christ says to love your wife. Not to strike and not to scream or beat, bro. This is not always happening. This is when she gets too much more than a good wife. She becomes a bad wife. A bad wife, so strike her and beat her and scream at her and yell at her? If she do something bad to you, what's she gonna do? Forgive her like Christ forgave us. Is that okay to strike her? And... Forgive her, but it's, if it's happened to you now, you were just screaming. Dude, we're, that's the love. That's what I'm trying to show you. That's the difference. Christ will change you. Will give you that. You will be able to forgive. You'll be able to love and and, and love your wife. So Nobody else will help you. You are beating her. We're not though. Nobody yells and screams. You might. It's, it's beating, it's strike. You can try and argue and say that it doesn't mean strike, but whether you want to say it's physical or verbal, it's still degrading, it's still abusive, and it's against God, it's wicked. Christ says to love your wife, not to scream at her, not to strike her. Of course you need to love your wife. Why it's called the wife? Because you love her already. So you mean to tell me your whole, your message... The actual book that God wants you to have, wants you to feed off of, put something in there that would not only contradict his word, but to what I'm trying to say is the 66 book love letter that God gave us, every single word, every aspect, every verse has meaning, has life, has purpose in it that we can reflect on our life. So when... The false prophets, and they make their own books, and they become up with these scriptures that not only go against God, defile God, but they use that room that they had in the book to where they could have had love and enlighten. They, they waste it, and they put it in with wickedness to strike her, to beat her. So not only are the fruits there, the actions there, but they're wasting. It's all nothing because they're wasting it and showing us all their, their true fruit. When God gave us the true word in every single word, every aspect of every versus what can apply to us, how we can live, how we can... Sir, how can prophet make a false book and then make a own... Easy. It's like if I go out there and I make a book and call myself a prophet. It's not. I'm not truly a prophet. We line it up. What do they say? What do they prophesy about? A prophet has What's to prophesy. Somebody that does the will of God, claims to do the will of God. And when their will of God says it's okay to strike and beat your wife, to suck on little boys' fingers, to take sex slaves, we know they're a false prophet. I, I told you I'll show you the verses, bro. I just can't. I have to send them to you. I, I'm just trying to tell you the truth, bro. It's what's in your... It's what's in your... It's what's in your Quran, bro. I can't believe you haven't... I was, I'll show you. Yes. I will show you. Do you have, can you put your, do you have like an Instagram or do you have like some sort of social media that I can send you something? Can I send you it? Do you have like a, do you have like a, like a, a an alternate email or like anything that I can just send you something to where you can look at it and we can still communicate? Because I want to continue this conversation. I just have to be getting going. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Let me, uh, I'll go ahead. I'll, I'll add you, bro. Let me add you and stuff. And... I'm going too. Okay. Here. Hang on. 
Hang on, let me put my stuff too. Hang on. Add me, bro. Because listen to me, sir. Mm -hmm. As a as a Arabic people, mm -hmm. still we don't know the real real Arabic. Okay. There is a major of Arabic. There is a major of grammar in Arabic. Mm -hmm. It's like another specialist. Mm -hmm. So the Quran. Sometimes we cannot understand it until we ask our scientists, which means Imam or Jiyah of Mosque. Mm -hmm. Because it's another domain. Okay. And plus that, the Quran, it's not word of a human, it's word of God, which means Allah. Sounds like a scam to me. Sounds like to me yeah. like, yeah, it sounds to me like you have to go to the special people. You got to go to the ones to, so they can interpret it. You want to know why? Because they don't want you to know the truth. No, I'm just trying to tell you, listen to me, bro. Listen to me. They set up all these, these, they set up all these scholars, the same scholars that say there's holes in the standard narrative so that the people will go to the scholars and that they'll listen to the scholars so that whatever the scholar says they listen to instead of getting into the word themselves that's why you have to search yourself bro don't listen to what the world uh, says bro search yourself bro okay so when you have a doubt on any idea or any source what you gonna do and you have search yourself you need someone to help the holy spirit bro the spirit of god that's the thing get in with god yourself bro have him help you that way you can tell when somebody's lying to you. That way you can tell when, when someone's trying to be deceiving. That's the beauty of it. That's with Christ. We don't have to go to man anymore. We go directly to God now through the Spirit of God, which is given to us through Christ. Because Christ paid for that. His was the veil in the old days, the temple, the holy of holy places. Only the high priest could go in. But Christ's body was the veil that was torn, so now we can go through Christ. I have a stupid idea, but... No, no, it's not stupid. Uh, understand. It's not stupid. If you cannot talk, uh -huh. you don't know how to talk. Yeah. You don't know English. Yeah. The spirit can help you or yeah. your parent can help you, which means the God. Well, I believe that if you truly seek, because the word says seek and you will find. So if you really wanted to know... Yeah. You are searching. You are searching. Search. You need to ask people who are special in this domain. And you can, no, you're you're stuck because searching for something you that. Sick. You're gonna go to the doctor. You're gonna sit to the doctor. But what right? what I'm trying to say is, bro, is is you're searching on something that you're, you have to expand it. The reason why you're stuck and why they're still searching is because they don't know the truth. It's everything that's based off of that one ideology, the Quran. If it's not right. If it, does, if it goes against the Quran, it's not right. You have to expand it. The minute you say, okay, maybe this could be wrong. I did this with the word of God. That's how I knew it to be true. I said, okay, well, maybe this is wrong. I have to test it. I have to try it. And when you test it and you see that it's true, nothing can go against it, you know the truth. You're seeking the truth. So if you truly want to seek the truth, you have to look at it from an angle. You have to have a perspective. Okay, maybe that could be wrong. And you have to try and attack it and try and break it down. But that's the difference. People don't want to do that with the Quran. They have too much pride in it. And, and that's why they're not moving. That's why nothing happens spiritually with them. But the minute you come and you... Uh, as a Quran, if you tell me, I understand what you mean. Yeah. If I'm a, I want to search about... And I understand the Arabic. Yeah. But the meaning as a sentence, it's not the same in my ear as Arabic reading. Mm -hmm. It is the problem. Arabic. Right, see, that's too confusing, bro. Well, because the Word of God, the Word of God has part Arabic in it as well, but. They take that and when they translate it and they translate it into the Arabic, 
we we have it and we line it up to Israel uh, to Israel. We line it up to Hebrew to Greek to English, and everything that the Arabic says lines up exactly with the Word of God in Hebrew and Greek. Not the same words. For example, God gave His only Son. Okay, God gave His only begotten Son. It's all the it's the same, even though it's not the same exact words. It lines up together. So that's the difference. Even though it may be Arabic, that Arabic still lines up with the Hebrew, still lines up with the Greek and the English. That's how we know it to be true. Because if it didn't, then there'd be something wrong. Is it is it cool? I have I have my my daughter and my family. I gotta help them. Is it cool if I add you, bro? Can I add you and can we keep talking and stuff? Can we? Yeah, you can add. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna add you, bro, and we can we can talk and whatnot. Okay, bro. Okay. okay. I'm gonna eat now. Yeah. So I gonna talk to you later. Okay, bro. Hey, it was it was nice, bro. It was nice talking to you. Okay, bro. Thank you. I appreciate. It. Of course, brother. Of course. God bless you, man.